Hello, welcome to an overview of the Smart Solution. You can see here I'm running this through the, the board itself uh, without anything connected. This is straight from the IQ unit, the Android unit, which sits within the board. And I've got a student's device here connecting so they are actually seeing what is loaded on here. In this case here, I'm running it through a PC, but it is just running through a browser, so it's device agnostic, whether that's an iPad, a Kindle, a Chromebook, or a phone, whatever it might be, you can share that content to there. So as I'm coming up here, I'm just gonna jump onto the next page here. And this one here is just using a shout out. So let's get the students connected, let's get you connected and find out what's important to you or any responses from the students as well. So I'm just gonna add in a page here in the middle of the lesson and I'm gonna do a shout it out. So as I shout it out here, I'm gonna click start for here and then that's gonna start for the students as well. A really, really good way to get the students involved, get them engaging and get them part of the lesson. They can type their answers up on that page, that part there and they'll appear up from here. Just an example, I'm just gonna say hello. And as I send that response here, it appears up here. And I can see that that's a student, because that's what I've called this device. And the students can actually send their responses up on here. So it might be if I'm asking you what is important um, in your particular setting, it might be the interactivity. It might be that you want things simple for the students to use, simple for you to use as well, simple for the IT manager, simple for everybody. It might be that you want the students to be able to connect it, might be connected to other people. Or it might be to try and get them more engaging, both for you as trying to teach and to facilitate or it might be for the students to get them engaged and then to be really part of their lesson as well and to be able to send up their answers like this either through images or through text um, is a really great way of quickly capturing um, their ideas and your ideas up on one page here. So as I move down here um, on to my um, why smart so why would you why would we want smart in our classrooms well you've actually got the smart board itself the smart board itself is a fantastic tool to have as a hub at the, at the front of your classroom or wherever you might particularly position it within your classroom itself here. But what is key to the smart board, it's got that multiple points of touch. So if you have got 20 different people writing on it, you can have that with 20 points of touch across our range. Um, that's multiple students using multiple inputs and they can do, be doing those all at the same time or of course annotating, inking. Um, rubbing out and all of those different points there and obviously if I change the colours and the functionality of these pens they can be something else as well. It might So there might be that hub at the board there, let's just neaten that up a bit, the hub at the board there. It might be that they're working on students devices, a bit like the fact that here that they've got those there that we're inking on those, they're actually working collaboratively in groups there. It might be that I'm sending out content to those groups there and they're working together. It might be that this group here is working against that group, a bit of competition between the two of them, and actually some different assessments or working collaboratively um, in whichever way they want to hear. It might be that the teacher is teaching without the, their laptop, without their device, they're mirroring it up to the screen, whether that's off from an iPad, from an Apple side of things, or from Android, or from Chrome, or from Windows, and being shared natively up to the board itself here. Or of course, if you're doing it on a separate network, we can go through the app as well. And it might be that the students are working individually on those as well. Again, device agnostic when we are sending out this work. And again, from that hybrid approach that the students actually working at home um, and accessing that in any way they want to there, whether it's a revision as a catch up um, or actually being part of it for whatever reason at the moment as well. You've also got the ability for you to be working at home and sharing and teaching from wherever you might be. Or, of course, if you're preparing any content and actually sending up to the board itself here so that the board has going it with a linking to your smart account so that you um, can access your content through the files actually stored actually within the board as well. So jumping forward here, we have got um, a fantastic range. There's the 6000 series and the MX. The 6000 is this one here, that model's the MX, really focusing on getting, like I said at the beginning, getting us connected, getting a simple approach, and very much getting engaging to them all, um, all the students as well. So let's jump into the 6000 range here. This is an absolutely fantastic board. You have got the, the software that comes with it, with the IQ in there as well. We have got a HyperTouch, an in-glass technology, 20 points of touch, um, and that's on Windows and Mac, as well as having 10 on Chrome OS. It's got object awareness. So on the object awareness, it knows what it's touching, whether it's the pen, whether it's the other pen, whether it knows it's your finger for moving objects around or the back of your hand for rubbing, or all at the same time, we can do that as well. And that's with obviously with multiple students as well. With the 
Um, with the 6000 series here, it has got Tool Explorer. And within Tool Explorer itself, you can have different widgets, different objects that are can be displayed up on the board. Whether that's a cube with, with um, shapes, with numbers, with letters, whatever it might be, it's bridging that gap from something physical to digital, taking concrete, pictorial and abstract and helping to kind of make that loop where I can actually pull out, um, touch something up on the board uh, to have those as well on that 6000 series. You have got 20 different objects if you want to be writing at the same time, whether that is um, one person writing with the uh, red pen, one person writing with the black pen. Um, you can, if you wish to have different pens annotating in all these as well, we could have 20 different things all writing at the same time um, and the board actually owes that. Very much future ready with this board um, to be able to access whoever is in there as well. It is running this Android 8 um, operating system with the IQ on there as well. Um, and that is a fantastic teaching resource within that as well. Comes in a range of 65, 75 and an 86 inch board for that as well. The sensors that are built into the board at the top here, the ambient light, the humidity and temperature and proximity really just help us to make that connected classroom to try and really focusing on the, the ideal place that the students can learn in um, and looking at those to monitor those different points here, as well as, like I said at the beginning, signing into your account to access any of those bits there. At the side here, you'll notice your convenience panel to be able to plug in additional devices um, or pause, freeze, volume, or just to turn it off to save time within that as well. And on top of all that, you have got the audio, which is two front facing um, 20 watt speakers as well. Absolutely fantastic board. Um, really, 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 really good there. If I just move on to look at some of those details within, the, within that board itself, this is the Tool Explorer. Um, and then again, looking at these different cubes where we can actually access it and access the board and touch it in some different ways um, using some of these cubes and different manipulatables um, to, uh, that kind of help and support your teaching and your learning in there. Actually within the box itself comes lots of, lots of great things as well as the peace of mind, keeping it simple that we've got that sure warranty. You've got remote management to be able to actually support that and to um, well, manage your devices with this. Not only smart devices, but other devices can be put on that, um, remote, on that remote management software as well, remote control. And of course, in the box comes with a wall mount um, for that as well. So moving forward now, let's look at the Smart MX board. The MX board comes in a range from a 55, 65, 75, and an 86. And the same software applies on here. So we've got that Smart IQ on the Android 8 there. And you can access all of your content from there, which we'll go and have, go and have a jump up and look in a, in a moment. Again, you've still got the hyper touch there, the 20 points of touch on Windows and on Mac, and that 10 points on that Chrome OS as well. The object awareness, so that I have got the pens, the pens themselves know that a pen is touching it, it knows that the finger is touching it, and it knows the back of the hand is touching it. So it's the object awareness, so it's able, it's easy, it's simple for the students to be engaged actually when they're doing that as well. And of course, that's at the same time, that's very much that simultaneous tool differentiation rather than doing them separately in as well. This comes with, as the same as the 6000, this comes with Smart Notebook and with Smart Ink. And as well as you're getting your Smart Learning Suite a subscription as well, which of course it's the full version of Notebook. And you've also got um, Lumio, which was previously called Smart Learning Suite Online, access to that as well. With the MX, again, you get the assured warranty, you get the remote management, remote control, and of course the wall mounts to actually get that straight on the box, actually up and running, uh, ready for the students, as well as your free software that kind of comes with that as well. So moving forward, the other board that we are looking at, have we got as well, is the Smart Board, the GX version. Now this one here is still advanced uh, infrared and it's got 20 points of touch on your Windows and Mac. Again, object awareness, so it knows what is touching the board itself. And that comes with the basic version of Smart Notebook and Smart Ink, fantastic for annotating over the top of anything and to really get your, get your teachers up and ready and learning and using some great resources and fantastic um, technology with that as well. Um, and then on the board itself, you have got your usual apps that come with your built-in operating system uh, for that as well. This comes in a 4K as, as the other ones are, the 65, 75 and an 86 inch for that as well. Um, and then in the box of that here has the wall mount, you've got your smart learning suite comes with that um, and other things uh, attached to there as well. So as well as the hardware, we've got the software as well. So yes, you've got the hardware and it's fantastic to have that great 
to be able to look at and to be able to use, and it comes with so many uh, educational advantages. But it's what sits on top of that that the teachers are using or you're using day in, day out that really do make a difference to the outcomes of your learners and the outcomes of your school as well. So as a part of here, looking at three parts of the business software, we've got the IQ, which is what I'm using at the moment just to deliver the lessons. We've got Lumio, which was previously called, called Smart Learning Suite Online. Um, and then we've got Notebook and Smart Ink that sit on the desktop. And again, that's both Windows and with Mac as well. So looking at the IQ here, let's see what that IQ can do. Quickly connect students to your lessons. Share the devices with the smart board, like I'm doing here, taking, making it simple, pre-made content, we're ready um, to experience those quickly. I can access engaging content from online storage directly from within the smart board. So let's jump in a little bit here. I, within this one here, I've got different presets. If I wanted to add images to those or videos to those, I can enhance my um, lesson to make it that. If I wanted to use widgets within there, bring in clocks, dice, spinners, different maths tools, I can bring those as quick as I want to into the lesson and use those there. I can also personalize those and save them into my widgets um, as well, as well as different, different inking tools as well um, within there. I can add different content to my lesson, whether that's a brainstorming activity, so then the activities and all the students can be writing here, again, the multiple points of touch, or we can all be writing and annotating with them on these different parts here, and that's having different students writing on here all at the same time when we're good to go with all those different parts there um, as well. Again, that's showing up on the student's devices if you're sharing it to those um, as well. Also within that extra little point there, um, I've got some different manipulatables, so the fact that I have got this fraction wall and I can quickly, easy do this and get the students learning, get them engaged and very, very simple way of bringing these parts to uh, using within the class as well. And there's lots of fantastic resources that come with the board um, on the hardware for these as well, both manipulative boards and lots of different graphic organisers that teachers can use and just get going with in a really nice and simple way. So to share with the student devices here, I've clicked on the people here and I'm actually showing it a teacher pace at the moment. And this is the list of the students that are connected to my device here using my code because I've signed into my smart profile at the top here. So I'm just going to click the home button here and then this is going to take us to the, the IQ experience, my Android experience that sits on the board. And you can see now see I've stopped sharing as well. Within here, you have got a browser and within this browser itself, you can access lots of different content through the through the, through the web itself. You can access your online account as well, your Lumio, um, with all your lessons but are loading, uh, but will load up into here as well. And then if you pick up a pen, annotate over the top, then you have got those options there. If you want to write on top of that web browser um, as well, that will be, be able to do that in there. Uh, I'm just not gonna say that just for now. So we've got the, You've got the, the whiteboard itself. If you wanted to just start a whiteboard itself from in the IQ units, something quick and easy access to, you can see it's set up very similar to um, the presentation that I was showing beforehand. But this one here, if I quit it, quick access to line paper, square paper, some different backgrounds, um, quite a nice little brick at the end, pick up a pen, start annotating, and the tools appear for adding anything like that as well. If I want to just then share that with students, I can start sharing with that, and then this lesson will then load up on there and then the students can be actually following this live from, from in there as well. So we've got a great whiteboard experience, really nice and simple to get those students engaging and get them connected to their learning. We've got different apps on here as well. We can load, load, load favourites on there. We can, pre, pre, um, we can put apps up on here. We can put them through remote management and deploy different um, sections and different ones that you want for your, for your school and they can be on there. You've got a really nice way of changing the input as well. Um, I'll come to that in a moment. And finally, your screen share down here, where you can share up to four devices, um, whether that's um, Apple, Android, Chrome, or Windows, and they share up on the board, either using the same network, or if you are using on a bring your own device, you can use on separate networks, then you can use a screen share app and share up to the board as well. Whether that's sharing just quickly, or whether that's asking for permissions first, so that you actually are you are aware of which device is being sh um, shared by which particular um, uh, contributor on there as well. So looking at that input button there, if I change the input there, it gives me a live feed to the different ones. So I'm now gonna jump onto my laptop and connect to the laptop and have that up and running for uh, that as well. And you can see here that this same, same experience that I've got from my IQ unit is now actually on the board itself. It's keeping 
keeping us being connected, trying to make it simple for the students, simple for you, and really a place where we can be engaging. This part here, if I just jump down to the bit of software, um, this one here, we had the IQ. I'm now going to have a small focus on our notebook and the Smart Ink. Moving the Smart Ink ones away rather than up to there. That Smart Ink here, you can see these different tools here. These enable you to ink over the top of anything. Whether that's PowerPoint, whether that's Word, whether that's a web browser, whether that's a PDF, um, and that's up to you how you use that, whether it's inking in the document or whether it's as an acetate over the top, you can use those there. And there's the quick and easy access to some great different pens, some great different tools within there as well that you might wish to use um, throughout, your, um, throughout your experience of your Windows or indeed Mac device as well. So I'm just gonna put those to the side at the moment because I want to concentrate on Smart Notebook itself here. Um, now Smart Notebook is a one that I'm just going to jump to here, that's it. Um, so Smart Notebook is a fantastic bit of software. So we've got 30 year, over 30 years experience with educational technology and it's packed full of loads of tools to really enrich your lessons. And you can see that there's just a list here. I'm not going to go through those end by end, but there's lots and lots of resources that are being used by um, millions of teachers globally and some really good ones that actually embedded your teaching, making it connected, making it, make it really engaging for the students rather than just passively showing something in that case there. Um, some ones there. There's some really good pens to be able to look in here just to kind of a look round and just briefly looking at a shape recognition pen that I can actually draw that circle. I can actually draw that triangle there. Again, I've changed my finger to be that one. Um, I could change my pen here to be a creative pen. Let's make it a smiley face so I can actually mark those there. Can I draw a square? Yes, I have. So I can mark it with that one. So using that differentiation, knowing that that's a pen and that this, that this is a smiley face and this is my shape recognition tool to be able to do those there as well. And as I put it there, it will be reset on there. So if I reset my finger, this now is actually a circle. So I've got some different tools here that really help the learners. The fact that I can separate that into sixths and have that kind of piece of the pie here and bring that out or bring it back in to, to make that shape again. If I've got here, um, my triangle, actually I want to see what type of triangle it is. All the angles are the same, so I know that it's an equilateral triangle, or if I wanted to change it to a scalene or isosceles um, as well, I can by pressing the right button and showing hiding the vertices. And then I can move that around and actually dynamically change that to the exact one that I wanted there as well. As well as lots and lots of different tools um, that are all kind of baked into, a, like I said, that 30 years of experience, but I'm not going to go through those points now. The other point within the software as well, having looked at Smart Notebook, Smart Ink and IQ, is Lumio. Lumio, as I've said a few times, is formerly called Smart Learning Suite Online. In the change in sense, it's just a name that we can pronounce better and a name that you can pronounce better. Um, and the logo has obviously changed as well, but everything else is staying the same. And those rich features will continue to be developed within there as well. So if I just jump into a browser now, and then here is my browser. In this here, I have got these lessons. So if I was uploading that lesson that we, that we were looking at from the beginning, in the fact that I have got this here and I can jump down, seeing all these different points here, and let's just jump to where we were. We were looking at software itself here. And let's look at the Lumio page. So as I'm signed in here, you will also notice because I've actually signed into my smart account, the students are now following as well. So where it is in IQ, or I could have shared some content through Notebook, I'm now sharing through Lumio and my lesson is actually the same account so the students are saying, signed in with the same thing here. In the way that it guides students through the hands-on learning, they can be part of this and I'll come on to that in a moment. You can enhance your lessons, you can take that static content and really make it interactive, make it engaging for them. We can support collaborative individual learnings and again we'll have a look at that and provide real-time feedback for those students as well. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. I'm going to come out of this lesson now and I'm going to go into um, this one here. Again, as I'm changing this lesson here, it is then what is appearing for the students as well. So looking at this one here, if I just jump down to this page here um, and looking at objectives. So I've got my objectives for the lesson here and what I'd like to do as an educator, I want to underline key parts, make any annotations on there. And as I make these annotations there, they're appearing for the students on their device as well. Uh, then if I would like to move on uh, and go into a bit more detail, I can have some work here. And here, this is here, we want to watch a video. 
So I'd like to do is actually embed a video here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is edit this lesson. And now I'm editing this lesson. I can see this is my trail here, but after this one, I wanted to add in something else. So if I click on this little add button here whilst I'm editing it, and I wanted to either, I could either import more resources, I can import games, or those digital manipulatables or graphic organizers that I saw in my IQ unit as well. What I'd like to do here is actually import this YouTube video. Again, save search within here as well. And I can bring up the keyboard and search for paper, oops, uh, paper lighthouse and layers. So there we go. There's my lesson there. I want to embed that one. I can add that one. And now that is part of my lesson here. So I'm finishing editing this, finish, finished editing this. And as I go back into the kind of delivery mode, it then appears for the students as well. They can be watching that YouTube video, advert free, and I, or I can play it up on here. Obviously, if we're doing this as a live lesson, that synchronous approach, they can be watching it live here. But also if we're doing that asynchronously or for following up work, project work, then they have still got that content to it, taking, making sure that they are on focus as well. So as I go on to this next page here, this one, again, looking at the layers within actually making one of these uh, pictures, and um, can we circle the layering? So how can we now, in a simple way, get those students connected and get them really engaged with their learning? And the way to do that is by clicking on these people here. The students within my class, what would I like to do with them? I'd like to make them have a collaborative workspace. So in this collaborative workspace here, this gives me the option, surprise, surprise, to collaborate together. And in this one here, if I had multiple students connected, I could have multiple teams here, but now I'm just gonna put everybody in one team. So it takes that static content and really makes it an engaging, enriched um, experience for us all. The fact that as a teacher here, I can still be inking actually circling as a, as a way here, but actually as a student as well, they have got these ability with these tools here that I can pick a color and I can actually circle on that as well. And you can see that then appears for the teacher. So if I click on this, I can then see that that particular student there has contributed that. Um, and then if anybody else was contributing as well, obviously if I had multiple groups, I could jump into those groups and support that group or see how well that is done and give that instant feedback to those students in a very, very simple, very engaging way. So moving on with the lesson, at the moment I've still got in teacher paste. So as I, as I turn the teacher paste movement, they are moving on to as well. So which, tick which layer would you like? So rather than just getting opinions from everybody else, what I'd really like to do is to get everyone's individual feedback with this one. So again, if I go to the student's devices, what, how do I want to interact with this? How do I want to get them engaged with their learning here? Actually, I want this individual handout here. So with one click, I can quickly change to an individual handout where the students can start theirs, and as they start theirs there, I have got the ability here to actually see who has started. I have got my teacher handout at the bottom here, so if I still want to continue to model it, I can. But actually the student has started their work here, so I can click student and actually see what that student has done there. So in the same way for the other one, they can be ticking the one they write and be actually commenting on their individual here, and I can see that as a teacher. If I had multiple students here connected, I could again see that multiple students had actually started their work. And as a student here, if I just click done, then that appears the green dot at the board here. So that gives the, student, the teacher the idea of, oh, they're ready to move on. They've done that, what, that part there. So as I do move on with the lesson here, seeing these kind of ports here, actually with this one here, I haven't set it up yet, but what I'd like to do is to add more content. What could we make a layered diagram about? So in the middle of my lesson here, I can, I can either add a whiteboard, I could add a shout out activity like we had at the beginning, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to edit this lesson and add two things. So let's find out where I'd want them to this additional content. What I'd like to do is to add um, a graphical uh, manipulatable. So in this manipulatable here, what I'd like them to do is to make that shape diagram within layers. So I've got these pattern blocks here, so I'm going to add that one. So that's part of my lesson there. I've also wanted to get their own ideas for it as well. So I'm going to add a graphic organizer um, and let's just run a, um, a run this one here. So they've got that within their diagram as well, a way of forming it. In fact, I don't want that one. I'm gonna click on there. I could either duplicate that page if I want to do, but in this case, I'm just going to delete it. And now I'm going to add um, a slightly different one. I'm going to add to get their ideas in together 
Uh, yeah, let's add that brainstorming one, the same as we had at the beginning. It's actually come in the wrong place, so I'm just going to add that extension. I'm going to move that down to that part there. Also, what I'd like to do is once they've got some ideas, they've used it with some shapes, they've had some layers in their diagram like that, but I'd like to give them some more ideas of what they could do. So I've got these game-based activities. These also sit within Smart Notebook as well. And then clicking on these game bytes here, we've got lots of different ones. What's really, really nice and easy for you to be able to see is click on this little um, preview button here. Within that preview button, it just gives an idea of what it is. So I could type the text and bring in drag and drop these onto here. Really nice and easy. The fact that I can just type that text in here, select define blanks, and I'm good to go with any of those games there. And there's lots of really good ones in here. A really good re label reveal in the fact that I can add my own diagram and actually put those hotspots in there as well. A bit like sending out a digital worksheet and um, labeling things. Um, there's a great word search. Again, that changes all the time. You can change the complexity in that. Some really good ways of engaging with your students uh, and getting them actively part of it. This rank order one here, I'm just going to choose this one because I know this is the one that I want. And within here, I've got my um, how to make my content here. So I, from there, I'm just going to type in some examples of how I make my, that layered, layered diagram. So it might be that I am going to have a hill or a wood. I might put the sky in, I might put a goat in and the sun. So all of those are going to be part of my layered diagram. Because it's going to be the student's choice of how they layer those, I'm going to put saying don't check. So they can put those in any order they want to. Click next. And we've got some great backgrounds that are pre-made for the teachers to use very, very simple way. Or if I could want to customise that, I can customise that uh, on here and I can choose which one I want. I can change the layout if I want to, or if I can want to change the background as well, I can bring in my own image, or I can actually do a safe search from Bing and click on there. And then I can choose a field picture, search for that. And there's some good examples that I might want to choose um, as a background, I'm going to choose that one for now. So as I click on that picture there, it gives me a preview. I don't quite like that one. I'd like a, a landscape one. There you go. That's a nicer one. I click OK. Yep, yeah, preview the, that one. That's fine. And then here I've got, I can order these, or if I send it out to students, they can order those as well, which I'll show you in a moment. So now I've finished editing this page. I've added that content really nice and quick and easy, either during the lesson if needs be, or of course, pre preparing beforehand. If I start this activity here, I can play it on the screen here, but also for the students and their devices, they can start and play that device here. And then I can order these whichever way I wanted to, just because that's the way I wanted to set it up to make my layered diagram. But of course, the students want to layer these in a slightly different way, they can layer those as well. And then they can have that app device actually part of it. And you can see it here, I've just changed the order if I wanted to um, through any discussion points. Um, we can continue to do that as well. What I'm going to do now is just to change the pacing of the moment. Because so far I've done everything in teacher pace, we're walking through. But what I'd like to do now is actually set it to student paced. So where the student's device now pops up that they can go onto any page. And as the teacher here, maybe I want to go back and actually go into their learning there. The students still want to be carrying on that, or of course they want to carry on that as well. It would also give them an ability to go on and look at the extension um, and any, through any of any other work themselves there as well. So, I'm going to jump back onto here and jump and continue looking at this page here. We've looked at the IQ, how simple it was to use straight from the board, how we could get engaged students with it and they could be in keeping connected with any device that they have as well. And that follows it through to Lumio and follow through to Smart Notebook and Smart Inc as well. Very, very much getting all of our experiences so that they are connected together with our students, with our learners around us, wherever they might be, making it simple so you can learn, simple that you can feel confident to deliver it, and then really an engaging way so we can get the most out of, the, out of our time with the students, an engaging way to get better outcomes at the end as well. And finally, the very much important part of that puzzle, piece of that puzzle as well is your professional learning. How can we take what we've seen how can we take what we know and continue learning as well? How can we make that effective across our school, across our mat, across whoever we, we are supporting at the moment? Uh, and that is through Smart's Professional Learning Network. 
Um, we can offer it however way you want, whether that is a bespoke package where we're looking at a one-off session or whether that is throughout the year with multiple points where we can support you both face-to-face -face, um, and uh, remotely as well, whichever suits your needs. If that's looking at our one-off sessions or we're looking at an ed tech survey where we actually look at different points throughout it and we support you where the key parts looking at your vision um, and how that can be supported as well there as well. Um, and again, that's either a full day or half days. Of course, we can have multiple points um, of that as well. Um, finally, just to finish off, we have got smart remote management, and that is a fantastic way to manage all your devices and actually deploy different parts to that as well. Whether that's something simple as um, deploying apps or whether that's turning it all off at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon when we're all going home um, as well. So there's some really good ways to keep connected even from that laptop as well, um, where you can manage your devices um, in a fantastic way there through that. The document camera has just been released as well. There's some really good features of the document camera. The way that connects to the board in a very, very simple way um, is, is a fantastic resource to be able to bring us together or uh, in, a, in a completely wireless fashion as well. So thank you, for, thank you for listening. Thank you for your time today. Hopefully that's given you a, an overview of the smart solution, of the hardware, the software, and the professional development uh, afterwards as well. If there are any other questions, please be in touch and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you, Vu.